and then we'll start. Hey, welcome. I'm Cynthia Martin. I'm Patsy Shreve. And today we're going to be continuing our series, Knowing God. And we're really excited to share this session today. S seems kind of nice to be in the same place, doesn't yes, it, Patsy? It does. <laughs> it really does. And I know, we know that you're going to enjoy this session uh, because we really believe that uh, you may be challenged in some way today. You know, we were when we studied this out, and you may learn something today. We're hoping that you do. We do these so other people can learn. And um, if what we really want is for you to embrace God and what he has for you. And so today we're beginning this session with the gifts of the body. And we believe, now this is going to be a little bit controversial, that um, these gifts are, we're going to be talking about all the gifts, but we're talking about some that come when we're, when we're born naturally, some that are born come when we're uh, spirit born, and some of them are calling. But we're going to begin today, and we're going to be talking about gifts and how they apply to us in our personal growth and also to the growth of the body of Christ. Both there's personal growth and there's an application to the growth of the body um, as a whole, the Christian body. So um, we're going to be talking about growth for the kingdom today. Well, we want to start off by reading 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. And this is in the King James, or no, sorry, the <laughs> NIV version. I'm used to the, King, yeah. the new King James, but <laughs> NIV. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, but to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between the Spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Exactly. So we know that um, in verse 1, he doesn't want us to be uninformed. So he's trying to teach us, he's trying to tell us what he wants us to know. And in verse 4, it talks about the motivational gifts. And these kinds of gifts are diversities, different kinds of gifts. Um, it's how God works in a believer to shape his perspective on life, mm -hmm. to motivate his words and actions. Then again, in, and then in verse 5, it talks about ministry gifts. And these are all different kinds of gifts, mm -hmm. different kinds of areas of gifting that we're going to go into more detail to explain to you. The differences, uh, ministry gifts are differences of administrations and service. So how God works with that in a believer um, and what he does to serve and meet the needs of others. Mm -hmm. And then we have the manifestation gifts, which are diversities of operations, working. How God works through a believer in a given situation to demonstrate his supernatural power. And God uses all the gifts in each one of these three categories to minister to his church. That's mm -hmm. his whole purpose, to mm -hmm. accomplish his work on in the world. Um, so again, in verse 7, we see to each one for the common good. So we see that he has given each person mm -hmm. for the common good. For I think that's good. important that we note that it says mm -hmm. each one. Each one. In verse 8, wisdom, knowledge. Verse 9, faith, gifts of healing. Verse 10, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, which is discernment, mm -hmm. speaking in different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. In verse 11, all of these are the work of one and the same spirit. He's the one that distributes them to each person, to each one, as he determines. It's by his 
determination. Exactly. Let me pick up there and let's continue reading through um, 1 Corinthians 12. We hope you have, we're doing a lot of Bible reading mm -hmm. today, but we want you to know that's part of us as teachers. Mm -hmm. We want you to know that we're not just coming up with this mm -hmm. on our own. It's found right. in scripture. So let's start on, <clears throat> excuse me, let's start at verse 12 and we're going to read through 26. Just as the body, though one has many parts, but it's many parts form one body. So is Christ. For we were baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. You've probably heard a lot of script, uh, sermons about this. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason to stop being part of the body, right? Mm -hmm. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason to be stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, were, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, excuse me, there, where would the, the same hearing be? Somebody must need to hear that. <laughs> but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Hear what he says, just as he wants them to be. He, mm -hmm. you're not, it's not a mistake that you have the gifts and mm -hmm. the attributes of, of, what, of who you are. And we're going to be talking about this, so stay with us. If they were all one part, there would be one, would there be one body? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Mm -hmm. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. We do that, unfortunately, in the, in the body, right? Mm -hmm. And on contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable and treat with special honor. We do things backwards. That's the Bible's telling us, right? And the parts that are unpresentable and tr are treated with modesty. Well, our presentable parts need no special treatment. But for God has put the body together, giving our greater honor to the parts that lacked it. I think I'm we're getting close here. So that there should be no divisions in the body. But this is the part. But, it, but that is its parts should have equal concern for each other. And the last verse, verse 26, if one part suffers, every part suffers. Let me repeat that. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So let's just break down that section that I just gave. Verse 27 says, each one has his part. My part is different than Patsy's part. Mm -hmm. uh, Patsy's part is different than my part. Uh, my husband's part is different than my part. Verse 28 says, God has placed each one of us in the body. You know, this teaching alone, if we stopped here, would really alleviate a lot of problems within local mm -hmm. bodies Absolutely. because we want everybody to react and respond the way we do. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, as we go on through here, we're going to explain how everybody's different and why it's important to value the differences. And then verses 29 through 31, which I didn't read, there are some gifts that are public gifts or community gifts, not mm -hmm. to be confused with personal and private tongues. And we're going to be talking about that as well, or the manifestation gifts. So Patsy's going to be doing some things on the board as we begin to talk about these different gifts. And we're going to be going through. And as we go through these, she may be making some comments and I may be comments because we just want this to be uh, very loose and, and very mm -hmm. informational and just kind of who we are. So first we have the three different types of gifts. We have the motivational, the manifestation, and we have the ministry gifts. And we're going to explain to you because this is where I think people get really confused understanding what they are and who has them and how they work in the body. So if you were to look in 1 Corinthians 12, 4, which we just read, and then also over into Romans, <coughs> excuse me, Romans 3 through 8, you would find these gifts. And here's an interesting part that Patsy and I believe that at the moment of birth, we believe that you're given a gift, mm -hmm. one of these gifts. We believe that every person is designed by God, and at the moment of your creation, God instills uh, specific gifts to you. That d You're not saved. You're just ready to be born. And so every person we believe in the natural world has a gift. And so um, we believe that comes under this category of motivational giftings. So some teach a believer receives these gifts after spiritual birth. Like they don't get these until after they're a Christian. But we personally believe that you get these when you're naturally born. So they think they come at conversion. But 
Um, let me go ahead and read um, through these gifts. And we have the gift of prophecy. And we're going to be talking about that. Go ahead, Patsy, and let's put that up there. There, there We're going to be going through these. And you'll see in s each one of these columns, sometimes we have a duplication. So the first one is prophecy. And it review reviews excuse me, reveals truth by exposing sin so that they can fellowship with God and can, and God, fellowship with God can be restored and or man maintained. The next one is serving. Just make sure that can be seen. Can you see blue. that, the blue? Okay, okay, good. So um, now let me move over a little bit. And the next one is serving, Patsy. Some people have a gift of serving, which they demonstrate love by meeting practical needs, usually through tangible works. Some person, a person who has prophecy is going to respond to things differently than a person who has a motivational gift of serving. The next one is teaching. Dis the teacher or teaching gift discovers and validates through truth so that the church remains and maintains its accuracy. The next one is exhorting. And so the scripture has these listed in Romans chapter, I think it's Romans 12. Um, exhorting encourages Christians to grow. I always call these the spiritual cheerleaders, right? Let me move over a little bit so you can see here what Patsy's mm -hmm. writing. And so they encourage Christians to grow by discipling them and teaching them and counseling and being the cheerleader. Come on, you can do it. Get up. You know, you haven't failed. Um, those sort of things. Then we have the gift of giving. And we have the gift of, um, after that, that one seems kind of kind of a strange gift. Patsy, did you want your, your chart here? Mm -hmm. And okay. so the gift of giving um, conserves and shares resources in order to meet needs. So we, so many of us, maybe a businessman, will have a natural motivation to be a business person and to be able to make money, to support missions and to support the work of the um, ministry. And that's not our, our own gifts. Uh, these are not all of our, our, our only gift, but they are naturally tendons, have the tendency to be big givers and the ability to, to make money, uh, to make all kinds of resources appear. The next one is organizing. Sometimes people will call this administration. And they carry out projects by recruiting workers, organizing tasks, or delegating responsibility. Now, I'm just going to tell you right here, everybody who knows me knows that I am pretty high in the area of administration or in the area of organization. And I jokingly but very seriously say that I don't want to do the work. I just want to tell everybody what to do. Because that's the way my mind works. I break things down from big projects into small bites. That's my natural tendency. When I hear someone talking to me, I'm automatically trying to organize it for them and for myself. And the last one we want to mention is mercy. And mercy demonstrates God's love and compassion by responding to hurt. Some people are extremely gifted in the area of mercy. They have been people who have um, identified is that the word, have identified with hurting people their whole life. There are people who have compassion for people who are hurting, and that is just a natural tendency. And I may even say um, there are people who bring home strays, maybe not necessarily strays, but wounded animals and want to care for them. They care about people in pain. Um, we uh, specifically know someone, uh, someone we worked in an office with who had this huge gift of mercy and we will be going through all of these gifts and talking about the strengths and we'll be talking about the weaknesses but this particular person really had a lot of motivation uh, had a lot of mercy and what would happen is um, they, they got stuck. Patsy, come back over here a little bit closer to me. And oh, didn't want to block that. Yeah, that's okay. But this person in mercy, mm -hmm. I, I think if I give you a little bit more hint, you're going to be able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But um, this person would feel so I much pain. Mm -hmm. already you already knew, yeah, <laughs> that they couldn't get past the pain. They were mm -hmm. always talking about someone's pain. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the weaknesses of a person mm -hmm. in mercy. Mm -hmm. But you know what? God works through spiritual yes. gifts in the body to help the mm -hmm. church grow. The, a body needs all, all of these, all of these working together and to be healthy. And by God's grace, prophets warn believers of sin, servers guard, guard against slothfulness, right? Teachers steer us uh, clear of heresy. Exhorters watch out for hopelessness. Come on, I see you fell. Come on, let's do this. Givers stand against um, selfishness. Organizers ward off, ward off chaos. You know, it's a chaos and it just drives us crazy. Mercies and uh, mercy givers demonstrate God's tender love. And though 
Although each person's behavior will vary according to factors such as temperament and background and age and gender and teaching really and, and maybe even uh, status um, as far as what the world would, because we tend to have our self-worth attached to those, not that God wants us to, but we do. Culture and circumstances. It's not unusual for those who share the same motivational gift to demonstrate common characteristics. So, um, you know, as we, reach, as we mature, mm -hmm. we develop these, and we think that every gift that we have, everybody else has, because it's our natural tendency. You know, and before we started our program today, Patsy and I were talking about how ten, uh, teachers tend to be able to move into a teaching gift mm -hmm. because uh, there's, an, there's a place for them. There's a, an actual uh, workplace that they can be a teacher. And so their natural gift of teaching is... Ex is um, easy to find and they're easily led into it because they know that fulfills them. But maybe someone as a server has a little bit harder mm -hmm. place. And also a who, person who has prophecy mm -hmm. as a motivational gift, now we're not talking about the gift of prophecy, but they're so black and white, a lot of times they have trouble in the workplace because they can't stand anything that's a little bit off. They want everything to be right on. So we're going to be also be talking about our ministry gifts over here. So Patsy, let's go ahead and, and um, go ahead and uh, change places. And here I dropped a piece of paper. So let me see if I can get that for you, Patsy. I'm the one who dropped it. I'll give it to you. So we're going to be talking about the ministry gifts now. If we were to look, continue in our, our scripture here in um, 1 Corinthians 12, 5, we're also going to be looking at if you, these are the three places that you can find these in scripture. You can find them in 1 Corinthians 12, 5. You can find them in Ephesians 4, 11, 11 through 13, and then 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 31. So ministry gifts are the tools that God uses to build up the church. Now, when we say church, we're not talking about a four-wall building. Mm -hmm. Most of you know that, right? But we're just telling you, we're talking about mm -hmm. you and me. Mm -hmm. We are the church. Right. You, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are the church. Mm -hmm. And so how God himself builds up that church is he uses these gifts, what we call the ministry gifts, and they are practical and they um, are essential and they're can-do types of, of uh, gifts such as those that we see in Ephesians 4. So I'm going to read that scripture to you. He gave some apostles and some prophets. I'm going to read them fast, Pat, so you can That's just try okay. and keep up. Okay. Some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith, and until the knowledge of the Son unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Well, I just want to break that down for a second. First of all, I'm not, we're not in a, in, a, in a perfect place yet, are we, Patsy? Nope. We are not. And so um, can we see the red on the, on the camera well? Or would you? Okay, we're doing good. Okay. okay, so one of the things about these five ministry gifts, they get confused with these gifts. And that's why we wanted to put them out into different places here. And should I get over so you can see her? Um, so you can see half my face, or should I just stay out of the way? Okay. So um, these ministry gifts, they're given to the church. And one of the, the big things that we will also be saying, and I'm going to pop in here and write mm -hmm. on these, mm -hmm. these are a calling. God calls mm -hmm. people to these. Mm -hmm. These are not gifts that we have. These are not gifts that we're born with. These are not gifts that the Holy Spirit manifests on you. That um, these are a calling. God calls you to do a certain work and you manifest. These five gifts are given to the body of Christ. They're not given to the world. They're given to the body of Christ to equip mm -hmm. the saints. So I could say, and I always do say, that these five gifts are really... Um, what they are, are, are is they are trainers. They are to train us how to do the work of the ministry. That's what the Christian, that's what the, the Bible tells us, right? And so they're to equip the people for his works of service. And until we are all, we all reach unity. Well, we're not all in unity, no, are we? No, no, no. And become mature. <laughs> we're not all mature either. <laughs> and we reach the full measure of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Patsy, you and I were talking about this before we started, that none of these gifts, these five gifts are going to be used 
going to be needed or mm -hmm. used in heaven because mm -hmm. we're not going to need mm -hmm. any more equipping. We're mm -hmm. not going to be needing to come into unity because mm -hmm. we'll be in heaven mm -hmm. with him and That's we'll be right. in unity and we will have the full measure of Christ because we're going to be with him. Mm -hmm. So m these ministry gifts are often confirmed by ordination. These are people mm -hmm. that have been called to the ministry. They're confirmed. Mm -hmm. They're usually licensed and ordained. Unfortunately, today you can mm -hmm. get on a magazine mm -hmm. and get yeah. a $50 ordination certificate. But mm -hmm. these are people that with what we call the structural church or people will recognize their gifts and their mm -hmm. callings and then um, they'll also it'll be recognized by elders and they'll be mm -hmm. ordained into what they've been called to do mm -hmm. ministry gifts are often um, let, let me rephrase this the apostle paul said to timothy neglect not the gift that is in you mm -hmm which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands, which is the presbytery. Somebody, people, people mm -hmm. will say that's in 1 Timothy 4.14. Mm -hmm. So we have the manifestation gifts. The that we're gonna, motivation, yeah. but we're going to talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the manifestation gifts now. So these are found. Um, let me move it, change places okay. here. I'm trying to figure out what's yeah. going to make it easier for everybody mm -hmm. to see. So the manifestation gifts are found in 1 Corinthians 6 through 11. And the manifestation gifts are the supernatural demonstrations of the Holy Spirit, his presence and his power in our life. So the Spirit of God is the source of these gifts, and they are manifested for the benefit of others to bring glory of God. So we have the spiritual gift or the manifestation gift of the word of wisdom. We have the word of knowledge. You can list them on but however way okay. you want to, Patsy. Okay. Well, I'm just talking about it. Okay. So. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit to another by faith, by the same Spirit to another the gifts of healings, and, and that's actually plural, by the same Spirit to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, and to another divers kinds of tongues, which we always say we call that interpretation. And well, actually, that's tongues. And then we have to another the interpretation of con tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same spirit dividing every or divining every man severally as he will. And that's this is not these lists that we've categorized in these three areas are not the exhaustive. We can find other gifts and we'll talk a little bit about those later on. But I think it's important that we see these three gifts in operation. And Patsy, you want to take a look here? I'm not sure if we're, we can see that blue very well, but we'll keep going with it. The green? The green. We can't Anything? see this. Yeah, it's because the green. Um, no, black? Yeah, we need to go over that with okay. a different color. No problem. So what I think, well, Patsy's making those lists. We, we need to know that if you see, we see over here in the ministry column, we see prophecy. But over in the motivational column, we see prophecy as well. And I probably stood in front of it. But here's prophecy, or prophet, and then we see prophecy. And we'll also see that in this list. And so there are three different kinds, uh, and that gets so confusing for people. They think if someone prophesies as a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, they must be a prophet. And there are two different kinds, right? And even a, a motivational gift of having that ability to see the clear direction is, is also a natural gift that's been given. So that gift alone is really in all three columns. And it gets confusing for people because they think of someone's maybe gave a prophetic word to someone that that makes them a prophet, and it's not. Because the actual ministry gifts, fivefold, are a calling of God, and the manifestation gifts are gifts of the Holy Spirit that manifest themselves. That's why we call them manifestation gifts. They're gifts that the Holy Spirit, and moving over here maybe and see if we can see that better. And so the gifts of the Holy Spirit are gifts that he wills. He chooses to give them to us. He can choose to give us any one of these at any time. We tend to have a gift that we operate in uh, predominantly. I think that if we're open to the Holy Spirit, he could give us any and all of these. I believe that Jesus himself operated in all of those. Don't you think so, Patsy? Oh, absolutely. I think so as well. So as you can see, as she's writing those out, we can see that we have the gifts that I've, that I've read through the scripture that we have them broken down is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits are really gifts that we know. 
And what I mean by that is when we have this gift, we just know things. We, know, we have wisdom. We know maybe we have knowledge about something or a discerning of spirits is when you can tell the difference. So we're going to wait here, pause, and let Patsy finish this up, and then we can go on. Almost done there. Yep. Interpretation of tongues. One more so the list. next you one. Can start talking about them if you the, want. Yeah, the next one that we that we've talked about already is um, we've yes, listed them as to say, and the next we have pro prophecy, miracles, and interpretation of tongues. That is some. Those are gifts that we speak. So we have the knowing gifts. We just know them when we know them. So a person who has the gift of knowledge, my husband will operate in this gift many times. He will uh, know something. I'll turn to him and I'll ask, I'll look at him and he will give me a word or he'll give me a, by a word, I mean a word. Um, or he'll say, he'll give me a sentence of something. He knows something about someone and then I can minister to them because I trust his word of knowledge. Um, word of wisdom, the ability to know what to do in certain circumstances, and discerning of spirits, as I've mentioned a couple times, is being able to know, being able to know what is godly and what isn't. And so these are the things that we know. And then prophecy, the working of miracle or miracles and prophecy interpretation, this is something that we speak. This is when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we speak these gifts. And then hopefully you can see down here on the bottom, these are the gifts we call them to do. These are things that people do. They have faith. They, they work the miracle of heal, uh, healings and then actually the gift of miracles. And so these are ways to break these down underneath this, this overview title of manifestations. And these are all because the Holy Spirit wills them. And I shouldn't probably have. I wrote calling up there in black, but the camera. But these are from the Holy Spirit. And so these are, these are, he gives them out, scripture tells us, he gives them out as he wills. And we can have more than one of these. We can operate in all of them, as I've already said. Mm -hmm. These here, we believe, come from at birth. Because, mm -hmm. why? They come at birth. Because we because believe that when, mm -hmm. when we're born. That they're, they're all given to us. God gives us, we all, we are all born with some talents, some giftings that are given from God. Right. And it just depends on how you're going to use those. Again, right. And we see that a lot of times people have those gifts, but they don't use them for the glory of God. They use them for other reasons and other purposes and plans, but they don't recognize that they're actually got God-given gifts that they've born with, that they've had since birth. Because they're natural. Mm -hmm. They think that everybody has them. Well, that's mm -hmm. not a gift. Everybody can do everybody, that. Yeah. You know, my uh, ability to look at a big problem and break mm -hmm. it down mm -hmm. You know, I saw, mm -hmm. and Patsy and I have talked about this. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it many times. We talk about this at length, mm -hmm. each one of these. Mm -hmm. But to see them together, it helps when you can see them as one mm -hmm. big um, chart to be able to close them down, and I like mean, to put them together. And like Cynthia said earlier about teaching, you know, some people are just drawn to teaching. And mm -hmm. so they may not know the Lord, but they're drawn to teaching, and they're good at teaching, and they know how they mm -hmm. have the ability, just they're a natural teacher. Well, that's a God-given gift, mm -hmm. but they may not even know the Lord, and right. they may not be a Christian, but they have that God-given gifting inside them to be able to do that. Exactly. So we are actually out of time today, but we want to we want to um, mm -hmm. to talk to you about this, and mm -hmm. we'll be talking about it more in our next sessions. Right, and so we're going to close. Um, and today, for the interest of time, <laughs> we just did an overview of mm -hmm. these gifts. Um, and but like Cynthia said, we're going to be continuing on and we'll be go going into more depth of what each of these are and how they can relate to you and how you can use these giftings for God's uh, for an opportunity to take and, and to have an opportunity to use these the way God intended you to. And then we're going to give you an opportunity too to take a motivational test, mm -hmm. gifts test to see. Maybe you say, I have no idea what kind of giftings I have. You can't I have no fail, idea. so don't worry. There's <laughs> no failing. It's not, yes, everybody passes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but you may not recognize what your giftings are. And so we want to help you with that and help you in that area so that you can be able to recognize those areas. So we want to keep in contact with you, though, via email. So, and of all our upcoming events, and they are all announced by email. 
So be sure to log on and we invite you to go to our website and to subscribe to our email list. And our prayer for you, as always, when Passiar and I are together, is that you obtain the revelation, that the healing and the freedom that you need so that you can become all that he wants you to be. And then once you become, right, well, as we always say, so that you can go and do everything that he created you to do. And we invite you to join us in our next session and our next broadcast as we continue this series, Knowing God. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.